Hi, all of you wonderful scuba divers out there. Welcome to Ask Mark, the scuba diving Q&A. If you have any scuba diving questions, by all means, put them down in the comments section underneath this video. And if you use the Ask Mark hashtag, it gets yourself and your question featured in an upcoming show. Uh, but I do my best to actually write you an answer in the comments section so that you actually get your answer um, uh, sooner rather than later. But today I'm answering a question from Russell about computer integrated buoyancy. So Russell asks, can you get a dive computer that also monitors the inflation and possibly deflation of BCD to try and improve my weighting? I'm only a fair weather diver whilst on holiday, but each time I dive, I can be on the other side of the planet and buoyancy is all different comparing the Caribbean and the very salty Red Sea. So is anyone out there making a smart BCD? Right now, there isn't a smart BCD that I'm aware of, at least, that can monitor your inflation and deflation specifically. But there are some options for you to monitor your weighting and just how much you're using your BCD inflator. The most basic is your good old fashioned logbook. Write down how much lead you're wearing, where you are, and what you're wearing as well. That way, when you come back, you'll roughly know how much to put on your weight belt. If you really want to manage exactly how much gas that you are putting into your BCD, the really only way to do that is with an independent cylinder and a regulator, and either monitor your in and out pressures at the beginning of the dive and then by the end of the dive, or you can use a wireless air transmitter and then a dive computer will read that and it'll show you like how much gas you're using, but it's not really what they're designed for. Um, so yeah, the, the most, <clears throat> the cheapest option is yeah, your, your logbook. Just keep a note of exactly how much lead you're wearing, where you are, uh, if you can find out the salinity of the water, that'll be really useful so that you can write it down. And, and then basically if you ever come back or if you're diving in similar conditions, so the same shorty or the, the same thickness wetsuit, the same equipment and whatnot, then you can work out, oh, well, last time I wore all of this was when I was in Tahiti or wherever. And then you say, oh, okay, well, on that dive, I was wearing four kilos of lead uh, so yeah I'll put four and then you can continue other than that it's quite good to work out like a base level so just yourself in a rash vest with your BCD if you're renting equipment then it gets more complicated because rental gear is different depending on where you are so it, there's not going to be a huge amount of difference but you might find some difference um, and basically do a, a full calibrated weight check which is right at the end of the dive or on a, a, a dedicated dive when you have plenty of time because it does take a bit of time to do a, a full proper weight check get yourself a buddy find some nice shallow water you don't have to do it in deep water and in fact it's better if you don't do it in deep water uh, as long as it's like two maybe three meters deep perfect um, and either nice and close to the shore or close to the, uh, the back of the boat and basically empty your BCD all the way get all of the gas out of it as possible and see if you can hover just underneath the surface if you find that you're sinking quite a lot you've got too much weight on your uh, on your weight belt so take a block off hand that to your buddy and then try and hover again uh, sorry, I should have said, I, uh, I forgot, your cylinder needs to be nearly empty, uh, so like 50 bar. 50 bar is going to last you quite a lot of time at like one meter, but you basically want an empty cylinder because that's when they're at their most buoyant, and it simulates as if you're at the end of the dive, basically. I should have said that first. So near empty cylinder and with like real basic dive equipment and yeah just keep taking off lead until you can just stay under the surface without floating up or sinking down and that's your base level it will feel quite light when you start your next dive you'll probably find that you deflate your bcd and then <laughs> you don't really just plumb it down like you're used to you might have to sort of bob up and then push yourself down and then swim down for the first like two or three meters. Um, but for the rest of the dive, that should be just how little lead you actually need. And you shouldn't actually need to be touching your uh, your inflator unless you're wearing a, uh, a wetsuit or something. And then that will get you your like base level just to get 
your body and your dive equipment under the water. Then if you add a wetsuit onto it, then you know that you need to add some lead onto the weight belt to compensate for that positive buoyancy. And if the salinity changes, if you're going from salt water to fresh water, you need to take a little bit off because you're less buoyant in fresh water and just kind of calibrate it like that. And it really just kind of comes with experience and some people are just genuinely more floaty than others uh, i had uh, one friend who um, fit as a fiddle and tried to get him to do like a survival float where you just lay on your back just inhale and you float on your back but he couldn't um he just sunk so yeah he'd have to tread water some people sink some people float in it so just try and find your like baseline of how much or how little lead you actually need and write it all down. Keep a very detailed logbook of where you are, what you're wearing and how much lead you, uh, you have and then refer back to it uh, whenever you need to. That tends to be how I like organize my logs. Instead of having it just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or whatever, um, I tend to do it in like fresh and salt water and like training dives. And then like here in the UK, and th there's lots of different ways of organizing your logbooks. But yeah, that way you can refer back to it. But if you do want to um, like log how much you're putting in, then yeah, it really is gonna have to come down to a, a separate cylinder. So like a pony cylinder, um, divers will do it if you're if you're diving like a, a rich nitrox mix it's not a good insulator so um, when you get like really serious you'll get an argon cylinder argon is a one wonderful gas for keeping you nice and warm it's a great insulator uh, but you cannot breathe it underwater so a completely separate cylinder separate regulator and you'd connect that to your bcd uh, you'd have a transmitter attached onto that regulator that would be talking to a computer um, depending on the computer it might override uh, because some can only connect to like one at a time or at least listen to one at a time um, and that way you can monitor it but the amount of gas that you're going to be putting into your BCD is going to be minimal um, whereas these are designed for constant breathing um, so it's it'll do the job but it's not really what it's designed for but really ultimately it's better if you can just get your your proper weight check done so empty cylinder at the end of the dive um, or when you at least have plenty of uh, of time lots of um, uh, or a good buddy I should say someone who can help you take some lead off of you and put it to one side um, nice shallow water and yeah just see how little lead you can float just under the surface only about a meter or so under the surface uh, with a near empty cylinder and of course empty dry suit if you're diving in a dry suit um, and then figure out just how little lead you actually need yeah buoyancy is a tricky one uh, especially when you're first starting out because a lot of instructors will overweight you because a lot of students tend to be quite floaty because you tend to naturally hold a bit more gas in your lungs so you tend to be a bit more floaty and um, it's just it helps you train with your uh, inflator as well so when you then qualify and you move into recreational diving you go oh well my instructor used to put 12 kilos of lead on me um, so I must need 12 kilos or whatever uh, so you just continue and don't really think about it but if you're starting a dive and you you dive down when you reach your like desired depth if you have to put any gas more than just like a psh psh into your bcd then chances are you have too much lead uh, if you find yourself inflating that bcd for any like great length of time it's because you're compensating for that negatively buoyant uh, lead so you might be able to take some lead off of your weight belt um but yeah uh, any other questions pop them down in the comment section underneath this video and use that ask mark hashtag either at the beginning or the end it doesn't really matter um yeah remember to check out our website scuba thank you for watching and of course save diving <laughs>